Hello viewers, welcome to this video. In this video, let's see how to run MongoDB database server in a Kubernetes cluster, all right? So this MongoDB is not going to be a standalone MongoDB instance, but we are going to deploy the MongoDB replica set. So when I say replica set, it's not the Kubernetes replica set, but the MongoDB replica set, where we have one primary node and two secondary nodes. So we will start with uh, three MongoDB instances as a uh, replica set, and then we see how to add additional members to the, uh, to the to the replica set. So I'll be releasing this video both in my Kubernetes series as well as on the MongoDB series because it makes sense to add them to add it to both these series because I'm using MongoDB to run inside a Kubernetes cluster. So for those of you who are not aware of my MongoDB series, it's here. I've done like nine videos here. So I've done a couple of videos on MongoDB replication. I think it's just one video, how to deploy a MongoDB replica set. So that's what we are going to do. We used Docker containers um, in this series, but now we are going to see how to run inside a Kubernetes cluster. So we will be using the Kubernetes stateful set instead of a uh, deployment or um, a standalone thing. That's because uh, the main reason for using uh, deploying MongoDB as a stateful set is uh, the MongoDB replica set, um, and the, the members of the MongoDB replica set need to be able to consistently talk to uh, each other. So they need a consistent way to connect to uh, the other members in the replica set. So for that, we need the stateful set. So um, if you're not sure about the stateful set, I have done a video on stateful set as well. So if you search for just me Kubernetes stateful set, I should have done, yep, how to use stateful sets in a Kubernetes cluster. And all of these um, members in the MongoDB replica set will have a persistent volume attached to it. So whenever a part, whenever one of the member crashes, and it gets rescheduled, it will attach to the same persistent volume. So for these two reasons, for consistent uh, naming convention and for consistent access, and for attaching to the same persistent volume, we will be using uh, the Kubernetes stateful set, all right? And I've got a Kubernetes cluster, which is version 1.16. If I show you kubectl version, so my server version is version 1.16.2, and I've also got the dynamic NFS provisioning installed. kubectl minus n cube storage get all. So you can see the NFS client provisioner running. So that will give me the persistent volumes. So if I use a persistent volume claim, I will automatically be given a persistent volume. So that's dynamic NFS volume provisioning. So I've done a video on that. So it's here, down here, cube 23, dynamically provision NFS persistent volumes in Kubernetes. So if you want to follow this video, you need to have a Kubernetes cluster. It should work with version 1.15 as well, but I haven't tested it. And I'm testing it on version 1.16. And in addition to your Kubernetes cluster, you also need to have some form of dynamic storage provisioning. So. I'm using bare metal, so I'm going with uh, the NFS, dynamic NFS volume provisioning. All right, so now let's get started. I'm going to git clone my Kubernetes repository here. So let me close that. Git clone my Kubernetes repository. I'll put a, I'll put a link to this GitHub repository in the description. CD to Kubernetes, and then to YAMLs, and then to MongoDB. All right, so I've got two YAML files, two manifests here. So the first one is the headless service. So if you watched my stateful set video that I shown earlier, you know whenever if you are deploying a stateful set, you need to have this headless service. So that's the mechanism uh, by which the members, the replicas of the stateful set will identify one another. It provides you with the consistent DNS names for, for the part. Even if the pod, if you're not using stateful set and if the pod crashes and it gets recreated, it will have a different name and there will be no means to access that pod in a consistent way. So that's why we are going with stateful set. All right, so now let's look at the headless service. It's a simple service, name Mongo, 
and I'm running it on port the default port for MongoDB which is 27017 and the important bit here is cluster IP is none so that makes it a headless service so you shouldn't put any load balancer or node port or anything so cluster IP should be set to none only then it will be a headless service that's a requirement for a stateful set so that head headless service is quite simple and now let's look at the stateful set the actual stateful set vi mongodb stateful set all right so apps version is apps v1 since we are using kubernetes version 1.16 stateful set and we've starting with three replicas syntax off that should be better now all right so we are running three replicas and then this one is important here termination grace period in seconds so 10 seconds is the termination grace period which means when the pod gets evicted or if you terminate the pod it won't delete the pod immediately it will wait for like 10 seconds because these are database nodes right so there might be some active connection so we need to give some graceful period to terminate the pods container we are using the mongo latest version and there are a couple of options to the mongod process bind ip to all by default it binds to the local host but we want it to be able to access from other nodes as well so bind ip all and we are giving it a replica set name of rs0 because this one is going to be a member of the replica set we need to give a name for the replica set and the port we are running is the default 27017 and we are using the volume mount we are mounting a volume inside the container under the path slash data slash db and the volume is actually coming from this volume claim template persistent volume claim template pvc and if you look here i haven't specified any storage class because the dynamic nfs provisioning when i deployed that i made that a default storage class if i do kubectl get storage class so you can see managed NFS storage, which is the default storage class. So if I don't specify any storage class in my volume claim template, it's going to use my default storage class. So read write once, I'm giving it like one gig of persistent volume for each of my members, each of the MongoDB uh, member in the replica set. All right, so that's the MongoDB stateful set. Let's deploy that. kubectl get all. Right, so we don't have anything at the moment. kubectl create minus f dot. So that will deploy all the YAML files in the current directory. All right, service created and the stateful set created. Watch minus x kubectl get all. All right, so as you can see, as this is a stateful set, it will start the parts one by one. So now it's running mongo-0 and then it will go to mongo1 and then to mongo2 so it will start the uh, parts one by one and even when it's terminated it will terminate the last one first mongo2 will be deleted first mongo1 and then mongo0 all right so now we can see all the three parts have been uh, deployed and it's running now mongo0 mongo1 and mongo2 so next thing we are going to do is we are going to initiate the replica uh, the replica set so we're going to connect to mongo-0 and then we are going to initiate initialize the replica set let's do kubectl exec minus it for interactive mode we are connecting to mongo0 pod and then run the mongo command all right, so we are inside the Mongo shell, and now we can do rs.initiate. All right, that's done. No configuration specified using the default configuration. That's okay. The next thing is define a variable var cfg equals rs.conf. Now we are going to add our first member to this replica set. So cfg dot members of zero dot host equals mongo dash zero dot mongo so that's the uh, the dns name for this part so mongo dash zero so that's the pod name dot service name so that's the headless service 
So this service here, the headless service, so that's the actual uh, DNS name that can be accessed within the cluster. And the port 27017. And then now we need to reconfigure our uh, replica set. So rs dot rs dot reconfig and pass the variable cfg all right cool so that's done so we have added our first uh, member to the replica set and if i do rs dot status replica set dot status so that's our replica with just one member which is mongo dash zero the first member and it's a primary node and here it says in the info message, it says could not find member to sync from because it's the only member. So now we can add other members, rs.add and the second node, which is mongo-1.mongo colon 27017. And let's add the second one, second node. All right, so that's done. And now if I do rs.status, yep, you can see we have three members now. The first one, that's primary, Mongo0. Mongo1 is secondary. And Mongo2 is also secondary. Yep, secondary. Syncing to sync source host is empty. Maybe if I do that again, rs.status. Yep, it's syncing to Mongo1. Uh, and this one is syncing to Mongo 0 and this one is Mongo 0 the primary node all right let's exit out of it clear the screen all right so our MongoDB replica set uh, is up and running with three members so now how would we access this MongoDB replica set so as of now we would be able to access this MongoDB uh, replica set only within the cluster in my next video, I will show you how to make changes so that you can access this from outside your Kubernetes cluster. All right, so you need to think about node port, load balancer, exposing the services and so on, which we will be seeing in the next video. But for now, in this video, the cluster can be accessed, sorry, the MongoDB replica set can be accessed only within the cluster. For that, I'm going to run another pod, um, just a MongoDB shell to get a mongodb shell and i will show you how to connect to this mongodb replica set kubectl run mongo minus minus rm minus it for interactive mode and the image is mongo and i'm going to get a shell inside the mongo container okay so mongo container is getting started container is creating cool all right, so we have the shell here. So now in order to connect to this MongoDB replica set, the connection URI is going to be mongodb colon mongo dash zero dot mongo. So that's the host name of our primary MongoDB. And then comma, you don't have to specify the port the D, because we are using the default port 27017. We don't have to specify it. The second member mongo dash one dot mongo and the third member mongo dash two dot mongo. All right, so that's the connection string. Any application or any service uh, that you deploy in your Kubernetes cluster that needs to access this MongoDB replica set, the connection string is this one. Cool, so we have started a different shell, different uh, mongo container, and then we are now connected to this MongoDB replica set rs.status cool that's working fine and there's also a one-liner you don't have to get into the shell right we can also use an one-liner which is the same url and using minus minus eval option rs.status and if i grep for name cool so we have a three member replica set mongo 0 1 and 2 so that's working fine Let's close the container. The container is going to die. Yep, it's terminating that Mongo container. And now let's see how to add a new uh, member to this replica set. For that, I'm going to expose, sorry, I'm going to scale the stateful set. kubectl scale stateful set Mongo. So the stateful set name is Mongo. 
at the moment we have three replicas we are going to scale that to four replicas minus minus four replicas and you see mongo-3 is getting created now so once that's run in um, let's log into the mongo-0 kubectl exec minus it mongo-0 and get a mongo shell and if I do rs dot status do we have that node added to the replica set no nope. so mongo2 was the last one and then we have mongo1 and primary is mongo0 so uh, the stateful set has added uh, the additional replica but it hasn't been added to the replica set so what we need to do is we need to add that manually rs.add mongo-3.mongo colon 27017 so that's added rs.status now we should have mongo3 yep mongo3 is now part of the replica set all right, so now let's do the command again. kubectl run mongo, and we get a simple mongo shell container. And then let's try and log into our replica set to see if we have all these members added. Okay, so, and now we need to add one more replica set, one more replica, mongo-3. Mongo dash three dot mongo and minus minus eval rs dot status and if I grab for name cool so now we have a four member replica set we just added another member and if you want to remove we can also remove we can cube CTL scale minus minus replicas three and then you have to manually uh, remove it from the replica set. So this is kind of manual process, but I will also show you in my future video how to automate this. So there is a sidecar container that you can make use of, which will take care of automatically adding. Uh, so whenever you scale up or scale down your stateful set, it will automatically take care of adding them to the replica set configuration. So you don't have to do this uh, manually yourself. So that's something I didn't, I haven't tested yet, but uh, when I test it and if it's working fine, I will make it a video on that, I will release it. Okay, so I think that's all I wanted to show you in this video. So that's how you run MongoDB um, database inside your Kubernetes cluster, but we haven't seen how to access this cluster this MongoDB replica set from outside the cluster, which will be my next video. I haven't practiced that, but I will practice it. Um, I'm sure there should be a way to do it. And we will see that in the next video. And if you've got any questions or any issues following this video, please let me know in the comments. I should be able to help you. And please share and subscribe, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.